Hey, it's Don the Auction Professor here. We went on a little vacation, and for us, vacations include sourcing wherever we go. It's always a challenge to see if we can pay for the vacation while we were there. For the last three years, we have always been able to pay for the vacation and actually come away with a profit with items that we found while we were sourcing on the trip. So we're going to show you some of the sourcing out of town. And we're also going to show you just some clips of one of the areas that we visited. It's called Hocking Hills. If you haven't been, uh, it's rather interesting. We go to Hocking Hills several times a year, so we know sources and places to go that will get us money every time we go there. This one stop is going to pay for about a third of our trip right off the bat. We were in there for about an hour and 15 minutes. You'll see what I actually found at the very end of the video. I've got some close-ups and things at the end for you, so hopefully you enjoy it. So here we are. This is the big flea market. This is in Hocking Hills. Um, I check the outside usually every time I go. It's one of the areas they do put new items in. Comic books was one of the first things I saw. It's a fairly big building. It's a large size antique mall. Inside, there are several big booths that have a ton of good paper. And that's one of the areas I can always walk away from this specific store and make enough money to recoup a large chunk of my cost most of the time. Now, we were in this facility for about an hour and 15 minutes total. Vinylmation, here's a Disney uh, vinyl figure. These are usually worth looking up. This is one I hadn't seen before. I did look it up to find out that it's really not worth more than, say, five bucks or six bucks. So uh, it was pretty much a waste of time looking up this one. But these are the type of items that usually do hold some value. You can see some jarts, the lawn darts in there. Uh, this is an old Webster Dictionary from 1873. I did look it up even in the rough condition that it's in because it's a giant size book. Sometimes these big books can go for more money than some of the smaller ones, even in bad condition. Lots of outside stuff. A lot of this actually sits outside all year round just like this. But they do put more stuff out here. Now, this case here uh, was a little tricky. They have pictures of good paints in the front, but that's not actually what was in some of this. It's just generic painting supplies. Nothing worth my time for what they had on it. A lot of country crafts and things along that line. Plates and china outside. Some industrial type material also. Most of the toys and things along that line that were out here just weren't worth my time at all. We do still look at some of these booths. Um, there's a couple ceramic figures in here, which I will show you in just a second. These were rather cute and interesting. They probably would have been worth buying, but I'm not big on pottery in China. It will sit for a very long time, and these are items that could get broke. By looking at the base, too, the feet look like they may have been mounted on something. They're adorable. They're cute. Uh, they do have potential, but again, I'm not big on pottery. We have this Cinderella figure here. This is a doll, porcelain doll. Um, it's from the Bradford Exchange, if I'm not mistaken. Some of the signs sometimes can go for good money if they're vintage ones. Those are all newer signs. There are some keys there, too. Um, sometimes keys can be good if they're skeleton keys. Not a whole bunch else out here, but I did see these military items hanging up here. Just turned out to be some sort of bag, probably for papers or something along that line. Not very old, probably uh, maybe just after the Korean War at the very earliest. So we're going to head on back. There was a box of toys too. Now I always look through these action figures, but these were really beat. Some of them were even missing pieces. If I could have got the whole box, say for five or 10 bucks, it would have most definitely been worth it, but not for a couple bucks a figure, which is what they had. Each one they had individually priced in there. And again, they've left these things outside, so it just wasn't worth my time. Inside, I usually go to one specific area first. It's a rather big store. This is just the main uh, aisle going down the center. Now, it's probably uh, four or five times that in each one of these rows on either side of this main aisle. Had a lot of stuff in the case, some military items. A lot of it was overpriced, though, so really didn't interest me. I was looking for a booth in here um, that has specifically a bunch of postcards. There were some other booths in here as well. This one had some stereo views, as you can see, and I did pick out two out of this lot, and that is one of them right there. Uh, I was pretty happy about it either way. 
they do show up dollar a piece everything like this this store has a lot of paper items that most people do miss uh, again, part of the reason I can make good money on this because most people don't know paper. They don't spend the time and they don't want to look up hundreds of items. So if you get like a couple thousand postcards, most people aren't going to look those up. A lot of the people that run these booths do a full-time business on the side also. So take that into consideration. They may not just be antique dealers. When you put it in a booth, you're just putting it there and forgetting about it. You're not coming back. You're not double-checking it all the time. You put it there and maybe once or twice a month you go by and you check or you pay your bill if you owe or you pick up a check if they owe you money if you've sold enough. I've talked about making notes, and this is one of those examples. I've got book of just places I go and, and where and what type of booths I want to go to in here. For the most part, they don't swap out vendors in these type of places. Not very often at all. It might be the same vendors in there for a few years. So you'll get to know who has what stuff. Now, I've looked through these um, a few times before. Um, it just takes a little time. So if you don't mind investing the time when you're out... I'd rather sit here in front of a bunch of postcards and spend 20 minutes looking through them than trying to find clothing or any of that other stuff that um, we used to sell. Um, here's really a good card right here. This is a movie-related one from about 1910, 1915, silent era. Good promotional card. These things go for like 50 bucks right there in my hand. I just get for a dollar. So, And I ended up picking up quite a few from the same assortment of postcards. Usually I can do very well on uh, ones like this. I pulled out probably 50 or 60 all told, a dollar a piece. So in return on my investment, this is going to pay for quite a bit of my uh, our vacation here. And that's usually what we do. I usually have a place where we can source. If it's somewhere we haven't been before, you know, we're just going to play it by ear. If we don't find anything, we don't find anything. But it's always been like a challenge or a game to see if we can find enough to pay for the visit. The last one he just pulled off is a advertising card for a clothing company. And this flag one you see here is a Mardi Gras flag. Most every Mardi Gras postcard that we get, we usually get at least 15 or 20 bucks for. Uh, one of those is a Shakespeare card I just pulled out. Some of them, if they were a little cheaper, 50 cents, say I might have bought a few more, uh, like the beach scene that I just pulled out there. But again, just a few minutes time, you can go through, you know, hundreds of these, at least I can. I've seen so many postcards, it doesn't take me much time to look through to decide on which ones might hold some value. If you've done this a long time like I have, you can just flip through these, like this religious one here. That's 15 20 bucks easy. It's one of the better ones. The imagery helps sell it. He, Jesus is walking on water, and that's part of the aspect. Here's a real nice early baseball one, circa 1910. There's a series of these. I actually pulled two of these out a dollar a piece. They may end up getting me 50 bucks or better on each one of those. It just took me some time, that's all. I mean, we were in this store for about an hour and 15 minutes max. That includes paying for it. Here's a nice advertising one for a car dealer. I've had some from the same one. It's a general local one. They've got several stores where they used to, so I know that one. I picked out a couple bizarre ones, some interesting ones. Uh, in fact, this one I hear is a really interesting, bizarre one. A comic book artist actually drew the image on that one. Uh, again, this is what I do. This is when we go on vacation. Everywhere we go, we usually dig around. The kids like to go as well. My youngest son loves sourcing. The wife loves sourcing. Usually while I'm doing something like this, the wife's looking as well, and she found a donut phone. It's an early. Uh, it's got a dial on it, so it's better than the push buttons. For 15 20 bucks, it's a pretty good investment. They usually go for 40 or 50 And then she's got a young woman's uh, Christian Association YWCA print of a bunch of women actually juggling. 10 bucks on the print, great deal on that one. Uh, she also found a bottle. Um, my son found a pin. It really is to have a whole family that does this together because basically there's four of us all searching for different items all at the same time. And at the end of the day, it's just put together and then it's brought home with us. So we're going to cut over to some scenes here. This is Hocking Hills itself. 
Um, this is a big, huge canyon, basically, with a uh, stream and a river that flows through it. There's big waterfalls. This is the very shallow end. When uh, you walk towards the other direction, it's two or three times as deep. There's rope bridges and all kinds of other aspects. If this isn't your cup of tea, you're welcome to fast forward it. Please, though, don't miss the end where you'll see the actual items that I pulled from that postcard assortment, uh, as well as an estimate on the price. But while you're watching these images, let me take a few moments here to talk about what eBay did for us. Now, the ability to go to places and do things like this and take the family on trips and things greatly increases when you have the ability to make money while you're gone. And I know it's not everybody's cup of tea to go on vacation and still do some work, but we're talking about stuff that I like to do no matter what anyway. Everybody in my family loves finding cool things you know, scoring on something, finding something that's worth a bunch of money for just a couple dollars. It's like um, treasure hunting all the time. The, the freedom it gives you, I think, is the biggest part of the whole aspect of what we do, of selling online, of using eBay and Amazon and the other sites to support my family. And just having the freedom to do stuff like this is huge for most people. Most people, just like I did, worked for somebody else. You may get two weeks off a year if you're lucky. You may get a holiday here or there. If you're new, you're going to be working all the bad hours. It's just the way my life was or most people's life is when you're working for somebody. I, I can't express enough the amount of time that I missed with my children, my family, through uh, working for somebody. I mean, I was always gone, even birthdays. I've missed anniversaries, key events, people have passed when I was out of town and I couldn't see them one last time. All kinds of things like that were given up when I worked for somebody else. This wasn't, again, something that I had planned on doing. eBay just happened. This whole internet thing just happened as a full-time basis. Now, I made good money before, so don't get me wrong. You know, six digits wasn't a huge, huge factor in, in my life. As a regional, you do fairly well. We could get, you know, $25,000 bonuses and things. But I never had time to spend it. I never had the time with my family, the, the wife, the children. I missed, like, first steps, which for me is huge because we, we grew up, you know, as a tight-knit family. For us, too, we have employees. So when we're out of town, our business keeps going. We don't shut it down. We still made money every single day. Somebody mailed stuff out. People still listed. The business went on. Now, that's a key thing to having employees. You've got the ability to do more than you would had you just been a one-person or a two-person operation. So if you're a couple and you do this, you want to be able to go to town and not hurt your money, key example. So not only were we sourcing to pay for the trip, but our business was still rolling. We were still selling. Things were still being listed every day while we were gone. So that's another part of what we do. And we've learned that the bigger you go, the better chance you have to make more and more money. This isn't something new for us, as I've said. You know, I've been around, I've made good money, but the time is the biggest thing here. The, the ability to be with your family, to give up that whole nine to five job. I have nowhere that I have to be almost at any specific time other than say a specific appointment for one of my kids or something. Without this type of business, that's just not possible. My wife had issues. My son has medical issues. And you, you just don't have the opportunity, the, the whole freedom to do what you need to do. Even for medical uh, uh, reasons, it's hard to get that time off. This is from someone who's worked for somebody for over 20 years. So all of this has been the biggest life changer. What eBay has done for me is, is freedom, is my, my ability to control my own life now. I don't rely on somebody else. It's all me. If you don't have the will and the power to do it, you know, it may not be for you. You may need someone, you know, in charge other than yourself to, to do well. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with not wanting to be your own boss or not wanting to have employees. But for us, it's given us the opportunities to be in a place like this on any given day. We can make a reservation. We can travel at any point if we need to. Just a matter of covering, you know, the, the business while we're gone. You can't tell anybody that this is the right life, the wrong life or anything. I can't tell you what you should or shouldn't do. Every person has a different outlook and a different aspect on what they do. Many people wouldn't want to have employees. 
from for us it gives us freedom it gives us more abilities more ways to make money more ways to make more money I, I just never thought this type of thing would be possible in the past and, and many people feel that same way they're stuck in the same day in day out job no uh, way to get out of it for most people they're living paycheck to paycheck which is what I did we did that even when I made good money you just find other ways to spend it you never realize it we never used to be so spend thrifty like we are now we're, we're very thrifty with our money we invest we we save we we don't buy luxuries because we just don't need them we learn to live without them we're not going back to having to need stuff that we just will put us in debt or anything like that this is the way to go we we live lean we don't worry about stuff like that we worry about growing the business making more money and and doing well and and getting our business going even better than it is now none of this would be possible without ebay amazon etsy and all of the online selling sites okay so now here's the paper that i got let's just show you here postcard wise you can see almost all of them are a dollar i don't think i spent more than a dollar on any one um some real picture postcards here these are seneca caverns now these are from where i live there's a cave around here and you can see these are early um azo so 1910 these are like 15 20 bucks there is sleeves on them unfortunately um here's another one this is uh pagoda at grounds of john lewis trout now he's a a seed manufacturer so this is an advertising one these are all real early ones somebody's taking the stamp off but that's fine um, let's just show you some more uh this is cape town um, which i believe is south africa some other early ones burlington iowa some nice early ones again these are some really decent ones here 1904 st louis uh, another good one now this is camp elliott california this is a good one too let's see what else we got here uh, another decent one here this is an axle works columbus city hall nice good one here Here's a advertising one, the Bulldog line, that should be a good one. Graphic-wise, another good one. Again, these are a dollar a piece, so, you know, I really can't go wrong. Like these Easter ones here, I'll probably get 10 or 15 on average for these. That's usually what I get for most of these. New Year one, it's got a tricycle, that should go about 10 or 15. Here is a Spanish-American War era one. Um, it's an early one. Um, actually, it mentions Spanish American on it too. Again, a dollar. I've sold stuff like this one here for about 1850. I believe this is another Cape Town. Yep, Cape Town here. Nice early street scene, 1930s. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Redondo Beach. This is the casino. On these, I got like 1750, I think, for the last one of those. Uh, Daytona, Florida. Nice early one, 1920s nice town uh, scene here now this one I'm gonna have to look up to figure out where it's from but nice early real photo postcard looks like there's some kind of uh, like maybe 4th of July something coming along uh, another one Howard Street this is Baltimore this is an early one I don't mess with much on Baltimore uh, but this one's really early uh, this looks like an actress card here good one there toy soldier again these are all a dollar I'm telling you that's that's why you can make so much money this is like a Spanish and American War soldier um and the toy wise it looks pretty interesting this is from a michigan uh place i think it says yeah battle creek michigan uh very interesting now all of these cats now some of them are named uh, let's see here novelty series printed in germany i'll have to look this one up but all these cats i get like 18 to 25 bucks for anthropomorphic uh thanksgiving this one that goes for about 10 or 15. there's a california one 10 or 15. Again, you still see the points on there here this is Cape Town as well same thing on that one now all these Jerusalem ones I should have bought some more of these but next time I'm around I probably will uh, these ones here I usually get 15 or 20 here is Boy Scouts or soldiers I'm not sure which either way it's a good one here um, some issues with the back but they had ten dollars on it originally I paid a dollar anthropomorphic frogs these are 15 or 20 bucks all these dancing for us and it's a tuck Raphael Tuck, so that's pretty interesting. Blue Top here, St. Louis. This is a good one. This is an old folks' retirement home. Uh, that one there, I'm gonna have to look up. But uh, these Fortune ones, the last one I got 15 or 20 bucks for. Uh, here's a fire truck uh, going to the fire embossed. It has mica, which is stone. Interesting one, 10, 15 bucks. 
Now this one folds out, I think. This one's on a big thick card, panel greeting card. And this is a British one, uh, but it's rather interesting. It's got a US flag on it, which is rather interesting. Um, Palace Pier, so I'm not sure why it would have a US flag on a Palace Pier one, but interesting for a dollar. Another good one, this is Camp Sheridan. All the Sheridan ones I get 15 or 20 on. Hand watercolored, woman at a ship's wheel, rather interesting, 10 or 15. Golf ones, all these golf ones I get really good money for, 15, 20 bucks. Now this is one of my favorites for today, this is Yale. So this one here, the last Yale one I got, I got like 57.50 on it. Nice early one here. It's a football series too, as you see it's in the shape of a football, it's got that on there. This one might be 75 or 100 in all honesty. Uh, John uh, Greenleaf Whittier, it's a poet. These all go for 10 or 15. Um, this one opens up, it actually has some stuff inside of it. Let's see if I can open it up. Uh, let's see here, let me get this one here. This one has actually real flowers in it. Rather interesting one here, Caramel Daisy. That's pretty interesting. Here's a New Orleans, an embossed one. Nice, interesting cotton exchange. So I figured that one would be good, 15, 20 bucks. Uh, Montgomery, Alabama Courthouse, same thing, 15, 20 bucks. Uh, New York Elevated Railroad. Now this one's really good. I haven't seen this one before, 15, 20 bucks. Cute girl, oddball, interesting one. She's holding what looks like a bunch of handmade roses. Now I'm gonna have to do a blow up on that. 15, 20 bucks, easy. Uh, these card ones, I always get some real good money for these. 25 or 30 bucks, I'm guessing, on this one here. Mardi Gras, New Orleans, 15, 20 bucks, easy. This is an oddball one. Um, DeVere, if I'm not mistaken, he did comic book artwork as well. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. It's about alcohol, 20 bucks or so. This is an ad or advertising one, E-Wing Chevrolet. Now, I know that's complete because I've had this same one before, 15, 20 bucks. Here is a um, baseball one. Now, it's been hold, unfortunately. I don't know why. Um, these baseball ones like this one, I usually get some good money for. I'm going to say 50 bucks or so on average for that one. And in fact, I got two of them. Again, these are all original, vintage, early ones. An awesome Jesus one here. This is embossed. Stuff like this, I've got religious collectors. I'm going to put, say, 57.50 on that one for sure. Sketches of Shakespeare, again, this one's signed, King Lear. Again, dollar on all of these, 15, 20 bucks. The New Spring Styles, um, this is an advertising piece for M&M Fine Woolens, 15, 20 bucks minimum. I'll probably put 57, 50 on it. I mean, all together, if you look at these postcards, I'm probably looking at like 500 plus minimum for what I have here. This one here is 75 bucks or better. I have not seen another one of this particular design. Uh, the last one I sold of these elephant series, I got like 60 bucks on. So um, now this one here, someone missed. This is a real good one. This is from this live show, uh, The Prisoner of Zelda. I um, mean, it's got information on advertising it. Well, actually, it's a motion picture. So this is like circa 1910, 1915. The last advertising movie one of this era that I got, I got like 75 for. So these early motion picture ones are just awesome. But anyway, and then I got this one here, a Red Star Docks Antwerp. Now, the country isn't as important. It's Red Star Line. It's a shipping line. So nice early 1870s through 90s era. Here's another good one here. This is California, and it actually has information on the back. A.M. Allen Potts Stereoscopic. And you can look through here, and you'll see the name of the city if you look through this whole thing. You have to figure out which one it is, unfortunately. But, oh, actually it has a number right there, 53. So it's uh, from Sharp Mountain. Anyway, it's a good one here, a dollar a piece on those. We got some other stuff too, but the high dollar items here are these postcards I got. And as you can see, it's a place I go to all the time, a uh, dollar a piece into them. So again, at least 500 bucks back on my, my investment on here. So I got about 55 bucks. Probably profit-wise at the end of the day, as I said, around 500. No exaggeration, you see what I sell these for. But that's what I have for you.